is Michael Monaghan, the writer, creator of Happiness is a Long Shot. Um, ex explain the process of how you came up with the idea for the story and what well, the combat is. I mean, the process is completely related to combat because, you know, on a, it sets on a Thursday and you, uh, you and eight other writers draw on my hat to draw a, a subject and a location and then you draw, you know, how many men and how many women will be in it. And then you go away. That's around 8 o'clock at night. You go away and um, you write a script and you have to deliver it about uh, 9.45 or 10, something like that, the next morning, where there will be eight director, directors and 30 actors. And, you know, then it's all random who gets, who gets what, what directors assigned you and everything. So, you know, I drew... Um, I don't know what I drew. <laughs> Probably but, addiction. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, um, you know, the first thing I usually do is, uh, when I get home is I go on the internet and I plug in whatever the words were, mm -hmm. seeing whatever they'll tell me. It's kind of like just a brain. It's like having another person who will say, oh yeah, that's about this, you know, and you find some interesting things. And, um, I think, I think happiness may have been one of the words, actually. Happiness? Happiness and addiction. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, as I think of it now, yeah. <laughs> I can think of it a completely different play. Because, I mean, it seems like here in America, we're, we're, we're so addicted to, to being happy. Or to wanting to be happy. Um, so, uh, somehow I got the idea of, uh, of, of therapy. Mm -hmm. which I, I like a lot because therapy usually has language therapists usually adapt some certain kind of language that uh, they teach to their their clients in order to do it kind of like uh, I, I've really been a fan of uh, Earhart seminar training which I never took I just thought it was an incredible scam <laughs> <laughs> because it kind of brainwashed you and then I got the idea of uh, the uh, therapist being a scam artist, mm -hmm. uh, like Mike Werner Earhart was. <laughs> and um, then as I, uh, I'm not sure exactly how the idea came to me, <clears throat> but then the idea came that all of his patients were sociopathic scammers also. <laughs> and, um, you know, there were the obvious ones, gambling, because, I mean, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big deal in, uh, in our society, especially with casinos now, mm -hmm. and um, gambling being legal now in, in Wisconsin, and uh, sex, which seemed like a very popular one, I mean, fun to write about. <laughs> and, and then you picked Tupperware, which... Well, see, that, I, I have no idea where it came from, but it seemed very funny to me. Because I would assume addiction, you'd naturally go to probably drugs and alcohol, but you uh, went with Tupperware. Yeah, which I think was, uh, you know, I think I, I, think I found a... Uh, something on the internet that that told about a, a semi full of Tupperware overturning mm -hmm. and people, you know, before anybody could haul it away, before the company could come and, and, and nobody was hurt, the driver wasn't hurt, but it was in the winter or something, but before the company could come and, you know, take away the Tupperware, people from near and far had just taken most of it away. <laughs> so then I got the idea of this... Uh, Somehow I got the idea of this person who was addicted to Tupperware, which I don't think is is that far from the truth of of some people. I mean, because some people can be addicted to different things. Some people can be. There's people I know who are addicted to buying DVD movies. Yeah. They have to have the new one. There's people who are addicted to buying electronics. They have to have the new, you know, best thing, the iPhone and all that yeah. stuff. You know, it's so it's. Yeah, and, 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 and personally, I, I, I've always loved Tupperware. Um, I think uh, I think the company actually is not what it used to be. I think it's almost, uh, it's not what it used to be, you know. But I mean, th what they did was kind of ingenious, all of their, their to totes and products and stuff. So anyway, it was fun. It was fun to do, do a little bit of research about Tupperware. And then, uh, and then it was a lot of fun to come up with, the story of each of the addicts, because mm -hmm. then I could just 
let my imagination go, you know. I mean, all three of them have, the Tupperware person obviously has the most bizarre story. <laughs> but, I mean, the sex addict was a lot of fun to him just, you know, let it go. And that's, that's kind of the most, it's not the most fun of the project, but, but it's a lot of fun. It's, it's right up there of, of actually just getting ideas. And when I'm, when I'm doing uh, combat stuff, I, I, I try to make it funny, mm -hmm. even though it might not be about it. Well, addiction is not a funny subject on its face, but I mean, I like, I like to uh, make things funny. And well, then, uh, what we should explain, too, is, um, which I think is a funny story, is when you, you told me this years ago, when we originally were going to do this as a film, that when you pulled, because you're known for dark material, and when you pulled out happiness, everyone kind of like... <laughs> yeah, a lot of groans and rolling eyes, and, you know, a couple of the other playwrights, you know, say things to me. Oh, you're going to kill this time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like a challenge. <laughs> now I have to kill somebody. <laughs> no, one of these characters cannot survive this. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just really fun. And um, so it, it was it was a lot of fun to write. And, uh, and it, it, you know, once I kind of got rolling and had, had defined the three characters, it, it, mm -hmm. it went pretty fast, which is good. Who were the um, original actors in it? Well, I gotta look at my notes <laughs> <laughs> because my memory's shot. Um, Lance Marsh, Brian Allman, Bridget Hicks, and Tammy Redmeister. Tammy was the uh, original sex addict, and she was, you know, she the, was the phenomenal. next day when when they drew names out of the hat, uh -huh. and she got cast. Uh, the director, who was the director? Um, Kalai Taihook was her name. Um, when, when we did, we, the, the most fun for me of the whole process is usually, or has been in the past many times, is the first time the actors read through it. Mm -hmm. It's like we're all sitting at a table, which hasn't happened a lot since, since I read kind of by remote, I'd send my script in because of my handicap, but um, the first time I hear them say the words to me, that's the first time. I could read it myself at home, and it just, it will never sink in what I've actually written. I mean, it, it seems one thing, but it's actually the other. And it wasn't until that moment when I first heard the actors reading it, and to get back to Tammy, she was so excited to be a sex addict. Because <laughs> it's not a part that most directors would cast her in, you mm -hmm. know, from my understanding, anyway. <clears throat> but She's always funny in whatever she does. She's incredibly funny and incredibly talented. And um, the moment... When I first heard them read through it, that's when I figured out that I had written about four sociopathic people instead of one. Mm -hmm. I really didn't know that until while I was writing it. Um, I just wrote it. And then it, it becomes clear to me to hear the actors. When I'm writing, I hear actors in my head who are actors I know. Mm -hmm. And I, just, I write for the rhythm of their voices because that's kind of what characterization is about for me, about rhythm. But... Um, then when the real actors take over, it's just like a gift. It's just amazing because they're always so much better than the actors in my head. You know, the, the actors in my head are very limited to my own experience, and, uh, and so that's fun. And this was this was performed twice before your benefit, right? This the original combat, and then the Pink Banana. Yeah, and then I sent in some of my scripts to Pink Banana, and they did it. At, I guess, and unfortunately I didn't see that because my health has been really kind of bad. So I didn't see the Pink Banana one that they did at the Ashton so, Theater. So, yeah, we don't know who was cast in those roles or who directed them because I, I did not see that also. Yeah, I, don't know. I think a lot of people didn't see it. <laughs> um, so this will then, so it was perform, performed twice. Right. And then um, we tried to do a, a film first. Right. And there were some kind of technical problems. I don't remember what they were. Well, the pro there was a few issues here and there. Um, there were audio problems. Right? There were audio problems, and it was mostly the camera. Really? Uh, it has all to do with the camera. Um, but originally, Brian Allman was going to be in the film. Yeah, because yeah, and he was the original. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and 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 then Brian, I, I I've worked with a lot. I had worked with a lot up up even before.
for that. But he dropped out shortly before we began shooting because he was moving to L.A. Right, which is where he is now. And Tammy Rentmeester was the only other original actor in it that was yeah. um, going to, was, did shoot it. Right. She did shoot it. But the footage ended up being unusable. Nothing against those actors, but when I did the first film version, um, there were some there were some minor changes that we did. Um, mainly, Amanda Shalhoub came up to me and wanted to audition for something. I didn't have anything at the time, mm -hmm. except this project going on. I said, "Well, why don't you read this?" And then I told you about her. Yeah. And I don't know how the idea came about, but turning the doctor into a woman. But I think at some point at that time, we just, I talked to you about casting her. Yeah, I, you know, I just, I think mo like most people, it's like once something is done a certain way and you like mm -hmm. it, I became kind of, you know, married to the original cast and even to the genders that were, and the genders were totally based on drawing from a hat. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, I was given those. I didn't decide them. Um, so I, I, I think my first reaction, I don't remember it too well, but my first reaction was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, a woman, yow. <laughs> but then it just, it just seemed to be even better, you know? And, and then when I saw Amanda, yeah, it was like even better than better. I just, yeah. somehow the dynamic of three women being in a room with one guy yeah. just seemed... And, and making, you know, since the character, I mean, they're all sort of evil, but that's... That's the major evil character. Yeah, and I think people want to suspect a woman <laughs> right, right I mean, away. Right, and, and, you know, given that Amanda is the way she is, I mean, she's she's very attractive, and, and she's also very, she can play the business-like thing very well. Mm -hmm. That it, I think the fact that she's a scam artist, uh, with, and I think the audience doesn't really know that until a very specific time, which is about the same time the characters begin to, uh, although the characters later on say that they were out to her from yeah. the beginning, but but I don't think the audience gets a sense of anybody being on to any. Well, they, they, they know the characters. Not until very late in the film. But they know the gam <clears throat> excuse me, the gambling guy is not cured. Well, mm -hmm. they know they're all not. They know that the gambling guy and the sex addict are not cured. <laughs> right, right away, you know they're not. Yeah, because they're just. So dysfunctional, <laughs> but you don't know how evil they are. And then the you know the Tupperware woman is just a, a totally different subject. <laughs> I mean, she, I mean, it, which is another thing I find a lot of fun about it. Yeah. Because I mean, it's full of surprises. Nobody is what they seem they are. The, that's that's fun. The um so. We somehow we decided that that Amanda would be good in it. I I forget how that came about, but. It, it's mostly she was, she wanted to work with us at the time, and we ca cast her as a doctor. Nothing against the person who played the doctor, but, you know, at that time I thought, wow, this could be interesting. And I did not recap, I did not use the original actress who was a Tupperware woman in the film because Stacy and I were all, Stacy has been in a, quite a few projects with me. And she wanted to do something else with me again. I said, oh, here, why don't you do this? You know, and uh, nothing against that woman who was a Tupperware addict in the film, but I, I just picked Stacy for it. And then the film, I thought the film would have been good. Because <laughs> Robert, when Brian dropped out, I asked Robert right away. Amanda, Stacy, and Tammy were all very good. Yeah, I, I thought they were good. But there was a problem with the camera that the that I'm not quite sure what happened, but the picture image was not consistent. Looking through the viewfinder, everything looked great. Mm. The levels looked great, but when you play back the tape, it it was it was like it was recording with the tracking off. That's what the effect it was. The picture kept jumping up and down, mm -hmm. and. And when I was when I brought the equipment back and I talked to them about the tape and everything, they told me it was probably a defective tape. But when I took that camera out again to shoot with something else, another film, that problem happened again. Mm -hmm. So it, it made me think it was it's the camera itself. Yeah. So th unfortunately that happened, but 
you know, and then when when that happened, I I always told you like we we will reshoot it, we will reshoot it, and end up being what three years later. <laughs> and, uh, but I mean, you know, it, it's a shame actually for the actors who yeah who did that because I I think that would have been a fun version too. But I mean, uh, by the time you actually did reshoot it, I think you had a better location, right? I mean, yeah, I, we had a I, much better location. I think it was a nicer looking location, which was also more believable because. Uh, mm -hmm. Because this was a terrible place, you know. So, uh, you know. Well, that's a that's the only other minor change I made in the script, story-wise, and how that story functioned with the characters. Because in the original story, in the play, they were meeting not at the doctor's location; they were meeting somewhere else. But um, when this location became available, I told you, oh, we have to make this the doctor's place because someone. Yeah. Someone gave me this location. It's like, well, I can't pass up anything like this, you know. Yeah, and I have no memory why I made that choice in the yeah. original one, except that then they were all in unfamiliar ground. I guess I don't know. That made sense at the time. Yeah, and I, there is just minor changes in the dialogue. And saying instead of saying why did we meet, why are we meeting here? I said yeah. why are we meeting at this time, you yeah. know. Yeah. And um, I only made two other all. Oh, alterations was changing the Tupperware person's name into a more feminine name because we had an actress cast. I think it was because I think you wrote it for a man originally. I the name I, was Steel. Yeah, I think, it was, I think I picked the name that was gender nonsense. <laughs> to me, Steel sounds like a man's name. So. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. Um, and then I had a dog racing form. And it was about a horse race. Yeah, yeah so I, I, I had that prop, so I was, I asked you if it was all right to make it the dog racing, you know, yeah. instead of the horse racing. And I mean, the only thing about the, the well, I, I'm, I'm not real familiar with racing, period. Um, but with when we do combat shows, often if we want a specific piece of music, you, mm -hmm. we just bring in the CD yeah. along with us. And, you know, there's no copyright issues because it only happens one night. You know? Yeah, and no one's, <laughs> never, no one's ever going to find out. Yeah, and... Um, Plus, I think the theater tin probably is already paying us BMI and ASCAP things anyway. But uh, but it was uh, a, a song from... Uh, Paul Revere. There's a horse named Paul Revere. Was yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's a famous Broadway musical, Guys and Dolls. Okay. It? Yeah, you got a horse right here. Then. And I love that song. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's not a important thing. I mean, and, and we couldn't use, ever use that in film because it's a copyrighted song. Yeah, and if we want if we want the film to seem, be seen wider than the Milwaukee area, we can't use yeah. copyrighted material. Unless we'd have a gigantic budget. Oh, <laughs> and yeah, it, it copyright stuff is just all out the window now. But um, what what else? Uh, I think there's other things I, I when I was editing. The, this is the first time I ever direct is something I didn't write. So I didn't I shot everything as is except there was one thing I shot two different ways. And that is when the murder happens, there's a soliloquy where where the character talks before the act the, the murder act happens. Right. And I shot it that way and I shot it um as she's, as the murder happens too, because the room we had, and the layout, to me, when the character knows they're about to be murdered, I I was standing there and I was thinking, let's we have to shoot this two different ways because that character can easily push past that person and run out the door and and you know yeah. not stand there and listen to someone you know talk about what they're going to do and how they found out and all this stuff. Yeah. So. I, th I think, you know, there's a lot of difference between them. It's yeah. Be just, and, and, and that was one of the major ones. I mean, you know, combat is, you know, you got to keep it, it's, you know, it's got to be sure it's got to be placed in one place usually. I mean, if you if you change places, mm -hmm. it's, it's tedious to do, sometimes hard to do. You yeah, you could probably you get away with scenery, that. You know? Yeah, you could get away with that better in, in a theater than you can in film. Yeah. Um, but do you like how it turned out? I love how it turned out. You know, I I think when you shot the shot it the first time and there there was the equipment malfunction, I think what we had talked about was you were gonna direct it. You're gonna you know you did a, a screenplay ad adaptation. 
based on the, the stage script, and then you were going to, you know, direct it. But then I was going to edit it. Yeah. And I don't, I think I, I got sick after that. You know, yeah, uh, that. yeah. Of course, it was three, three years. <laughs> but um, but I, I just am very happy with the way it turned out. Yeah, I love it. I just, I really love it. Okay, cool. I hope well, a lot of people see it.